Good evening. It is April 15th and we are Google Rocks Hawaii and this is episode number 32 and we're very excited um, because we're doing three Maui exchange students in Europe. Kyla is here and she actually can stay with us for only 20 minutes so I'm going to go right off the bat and um, uh, introduce her and then Simone and Sarah are somewhere. Um, they'll come on, and actually Thomas will be coming um, on as well. So, um, so let me introduce um, Kyla. Hi, Kyla. Hi. Kyla is in the Czech Republic and eating breakfast. Isn't that the coolest? <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us what? exactly where you are Kyla and she's um, going to go to school so we're really <laughs> catching up quickly with her. Let's see, the city I live in is called Pilsen. It is the fourth largest city in the Czech Republic and the beer capital of the world. So that's where I am. <laughs> Neat. And can you drink beer? Is it allowed? I'm um, curious. For your age the, I mean. The official drinking age is 18. But it's a very cultural thing here, so there might as well not be a drinking age. Ah, that's true throughout Europe, I think, isn't it? A lot yeah, of European I countries. Think. Nice. So, how is your year going? My year's going really well. I love it over here. The hardest part is going to be coming back. So. Wow. Did you have a hard time? Um, did you have a hard time adjusting at the beginning, or did you just jump right in? I didn't have a hard time at all. I didn't get any homesickness or anything really. The language was really hard because Czech is impossible to learn. But it's it's been good. Even in the beginning, it was good. Nice. That's really cool. Well, you look great. And you're going, you're going to go to school in 20 minutes or maybe 15 minutes now. Um, yeah. Jasmine, yeah. by the way, Jasmine's on the side trying to get everybody on. Um, so we'll see what happens. But um, so, what is school like um, in Europe? I don't in do where much you are. in school, but <laughs> <laughs> the, the classes are more of a lecture format. There's a lot less student participation, and let's see. I think they all seem to be a lot smarter than we are, but they don't have any homework. So I'm not really sure how that works. <laughs> so it's all lecture. Um, pretty much, yeah. And what are your periods a day? Do you have periods like you have at school? Um, at our school? different classes every day, and each student doesn't have an individual schedule. They go through every class together as a class. Wow. Oh, wow. So, so you move around. The entire class moves around. Yeah, yeah, we all move. We have one kind of home classroom, homeroom, I guess that we are in for the majority of our classes, but we move around a lot. And our school has so many stairs, it's horrible. Wow. Here comes Thomas. Oh, it worked. I think. That was, Hi, Thomas. Um, we're, talking to, we're talking to Kyla. I'll just go down the line here with, uh, with the people. I'm going to unbox you. OK. Um, so let me introduce everybody else while Kyla has her breakfast. <laughs> uh, Jasmine, could you unmute yourself and tell tell us who you, who you are, please? Hello. Oh, hi. Um, I'm a junior at Seabury Hall, and yeah. Okay. Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle Colt. I'm the librarian at Halekula Elementary School, and I'm just um, enjoying the conversation. This will be fun to hear about your experiences abroad. Cool. Uh, Sarah, I have a little blue box for you. I don't know if you can hear us or not. Are you there, Sarah? Sarah Armstrong surprised us and is here. Um, she's going to come back on. She can't hear us. OK, all right. We'll, we'll talk to her next. OK, Susan? Could you introduce yourself? I'm Susan Persh, the counselor. Hi, Kyla. <laughs> Thomas? 
Thomas, Thomas is really dark. Dark. Thomas yeah, looks dark. like a horror movie. I don't know what I can do. Like, there's a lamp, but I have a bunch of shirts hanging. <laughs> that might have helped. I don't know. I don't think I can do. My light's pretty bad. No problem. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sophomore at Seabury Hall. Uh, I thought broad stuff was pretty cool being, so I hopped in. Cool. Very cool. Okay, I don't know where Simone is, so hopefully she'll show up. Does anybody have any questions of um, Kyla? Because I know she has to go pretty soon. Yeah, I have a question. Hey, Kyla, I wonder if you folks have, if you've gone traveling. Um, when I went to Europe, a big thing was to go backpacking and to go all around on trains. I wonder if you've done that. Well, with my organization, I'm supposed to only go out of the country once for five days. But I, I, I've been traveling a lot. It's been great. Last weekend, I was in Prague. I go to Prague a lot. And then the weekend before that, I was in Krakow in Poland. And then the weekend before that, I was in Austria. And then the weekend after next, I'm going to Vienna. No, this weekend. And then the weekend after next, I'm going to Budapest. So I've been traveling all the time. It's great. That's fantastic. Wow. wow. That wow. is. Yeah, I'm almost never home on the weekends, though. And what kind of... Uh, I know there's a girl in your family, the one with the spider. Yeah. <laughs> what is what is the family like? Mom and dad and yeah, kids? Yeah, mom, and dad, um, two daughters. One is a year younger than I am, and one is two years older than I am. And everyone's really great. I go to school with the younger one. The older one is in university. It's her first year. She's studying anthropology. And both of my parents are doctors. My mom's a hematologist, and my dad works in intensive care. <laughs> And, yeah, they're all great people. Aw. When do you, how long, how much longer do you stay? Um, I stay until June 29th, which is the day after school ends. So I'm really bummed about that because I want to stay and party and go to all the festivals, but I can't. Wow. Sounds like you're really immersed in, in where you are. Yeah, it's be yeah, tough really, coming back. Yeah, I feel more at home here than I did in the U.S. So, yeah. do you think you'll do you think you'll return after? Yeah, I'm definitely going to try to come to university in Europe. So, nice. Wow, that's going to be a, a change for you. Yeah. It, yeah. Did anything surprise you when you went over? I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of new things, but any special thing that surprised you? When you um, were over there? Let's see. There are a lot of just weird little cultural things that take a lot of getting used to. Like over here, it's really rude to sniffle. Like if you have a runny nose, you have to blow your nose. But blowing your nose isn't rude at all. People blow their nose really loudly all the time in public transport, in the classroom, just in the middle of a conversation. And it, I don't know, that, that's gotten... And how did you find out? Did your did the girls tell you about that? How do you find um, that out? Well, I noticed it like immediately because I mean they blow their nose all the time. It just happens so much. And then I was on the bus and I sniffled and this stranger walked all the way across the bus and handed me a tissue. <laughs> wow. So they're, they're pretty serious about it. So I, I know this is stupid, but could you Say a few words in Czech mm. so we can get an, a flavor of um, what the language is like. Yeah, sure. What, what should I say? <laughs> Hello, um, how are you? Um, ahoy, jak se máš? Yeah. Oh, it almost sounds French to me. Oh, it's it's more it's a Slavic language, so it's somewhere between Russian and mm, maybe Italian or something. I don't know. It sounds. I, I like the way it sounds, but a lot of people think it's an ugly language. We have this one letter that foreigners can almost never pronounce, and I can finally pronounce it, so I'm really happy. It's zh. It's like a zh sound, but then you have to roll it, and mm. it's so hard. <laughs> it's very cool. Well, you know, um, I was wondering, do you get involved with the politics at all? What What are the politics like there, or do you get um, involved with that at all? I don't really get very involved. The politics here are really corrupt, 
everyone hates the president. Um, yeah. Mm. There, there's always new gossip and everything, but... And everyone's really worried about the situation in Ukraine because it's right next to us, and everyone hates Russia. Everyone hates Russia. Wow. But, yeah. That's interesting that you bring that up because Thomas wants to do... Um, tell her what you want to do, Thomas. He wants to do a hangout. Yeah, I want to um, start a little Google hangout about the uh, discussion locally, and uh, people who aren't local can also drop, jump into the conversation, but mainly discuss the Ukraine crisis and like opinions about it and stuff. I think it's pretty interesting. So it's really cool that you brought it up. Really interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I'm not informed enough about it, <laughs> but... It's How do people get their news there? I mean, are, I'm assuming they have cell phones like us, or no? Yeah, yeah, there aren't nearly as many iPhones, but, I mean, everyone has cell phones, TV, it's it's the same. It's, it's wow. not like a third world country or anything, so. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Are you um, are you on your way out, or I just don't want to stop you. We want to keep you as long as possible, but if you have to go, let us know. Um, two are minutes, you? probably. If anyone two has minutes. any last-minute questions. Okay. <laughs> Anybody have last-minute questions for Kyla? What are the um, classes that you're taking at school? Ooh, okay, let's see. It's interesting. Where we have one year of biology, one year of chemistry, one year of physics, they have all of them for four years. So I'm taking biology, chemistry, physics, math, English, Spanish, Czech. I was in a Russian class for a while, and I was in a German class for a while, but I dropped out of both of those to take more Spanish classes. Um, we have a geography class, a like, psychology class. Um, what else? Wait, now you're taking all of that at once? Yeah, yeah, we don't have classes every day. Mm. Uh, we have a different schedule every day. Wow. Do you have a lot of homework? No homework. Oh, oh, oh. They, they just don't really do homework. <laughs> that is fantastic. It sounds kind of neat. No, it's it's a really great school system. I'm kind of jealous. I mean, like, I love Subaru, but it's no work here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, unless anybody has a last-minute question, we'll let you go. Thank you so much for coming, Kyla. No problem. Enjoy your two months or two and three months. And yeah. I, I'm sorry, but we're going to be glad when you come back. <laughs> to, and I'll hopefully share all your experiences with us. But yeah, yeah thanks so much. You're welcome. Well. I'll go, so have a nice okay. evening, have a, wonderful, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks. Thanks, Kyla. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, okay now we this have um, Simone is somewhere. She just joined. Um, sorry? She just joined, I think. Okay, we have maybe, uh, hopefully she can hear us. And then I don't know where Sarah is. Oh. Sarah got... Sarah got removed. Why did Sarah get removed from this video call? Okay. This is weird stuff. Yeah, it's totally weird. Well, at least we got Kyla. That's a good thing. <clears throat> hey, Thomas, um, I have a question for you. Are you. Did you say you're a sophomore in high school? Yep, I'm a sophomore in high school. Wow, so I have, well, two other quick follow-up questions then. Um, you mentioned you were interested in the situation in Ukraine, and I'm just wondering, were you um, in tune with politics when you were living on Maui, or did it happen more now when you're abroad? And my second question oh, is... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just a student Maui. here at Seabury. No, sorry. Oh, you're yeah, at Seabury. Oh, yeah, I thought you were at some exquisite location too, and I yeah. thought, wow, yeah. his he parents didn't go exquisite. when he was a sophomore? <laughs> I wish they did. Some wow. Stuff. Yeah, I wish I could have gotten more world experience. But well, so is this something rock. that you could consider when you're a junior then? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, probably. I have a pretty set course load for my junior year already. I got into all the um, honors. Well, not all of them, but I got into a good portion of honors slash AP classes I wanted to take. So I'd be a little bummed if I had to drop them, but 
Yeah. I don't know. Getting off this rock seems pretty interesting. Here comes the phone <laughs> again. Come on, Simone, you can do it. Oh, she went down again. Oh, no, she's here. Simone, where are you? So I actually... Susan, ahead, so Linda, is it that um, junior year, do many kids go abroad from Seabury? I mean, there's a handful who do go abroad. It's a program at your school. You want to answer that, Susan? You want me to answer? You can answer, Linda. <laughs> okay, um, Susan is involved with Rotary, so um, two of those, two of the kids, Simone and Sarah, uh, went uh, on Rotary with a scholarship. Or see, I don't even know, Susan. Come on now, you can do it. Tell us. Can you hear us, Susan? Can you hear are me? You, are you ignoring me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, um, can you hear me now? Ahead. Yes, go ahead. The kids just found out about it from Rotary and applied for it and were granted the opportunity. Um, it's a little challenging because, like Thomas said, you have a curriculum set out for yourself in a rigorous school. And to back out of that for a year, you lose your space. You're not guaranteed readmission back to the school, although we know you exist and we want you back. Um, so it's not not a lot of kids have done it. This is rare to have three go off. We've had one or two in the past. I think Anya did it one year. That's Anya Whitaker. Yeah, remember her? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she went to Spain. I don't remember you know, going I know abroad. When, when kids go abroad, or I know for me, I learned so much, but I don't know if it was necessarily um, the academics. I think it's more learning about myself and worldview and just my understanding of what it means to be an American or a citizen of the world. So do you folks find when they come back, they, they don't have like that, um, you know, like Thomas was just mentioning all his AP classes, that they're lagging a little bit in that... Um, the core areas, or does it not really matter because these are stellar students who catch up quick? Um, I think our headmaster's kind of worried about it. Uh, I don't have the their SAT scores or any of that, but I, I think there's a bit of a worry because, you know, Seabury's on track with College Board. Hi. And, um, tuned into what colleges here are looking for and what you have to study for those things, right? So, but you do get this other breadth of knowledge that's so invaluable and as you know, you're wiser for it. I saw Simone for a second, didn't I? Simone, was that? Somebody, somebody is here, let me see who it is. It's Simone. Sarah, is something's <laughs> happening with Sarah? I, I, um, Invited her and Simone again. Simone says uh, she's connected, but I don't know why she can't understand anything. Or hear or see us. She can't and always see us. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Okay. Um, I'm going to put the link again. Maybe no. There's but they're, they're they're in though, right? There's oh, there's Simone. Simone. Yay! Hi, Simone. You're frozen, but I know you're there. You look worried. You do look very worried. Like a big C on your face. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> Hi, Simone. And then there's somebody else. Is that Sarah? No, that's another Simone. Oh, okay. This is weird stuff. <laughs> well, just if uh, we do have uh, some viewers, so just to let the viewers know, it, uh, we did have Kyla on, and it was wonderful. And so um, when it goes on YouTube, you'll be able to um, see her. She was fantastic. Um, she has really um, absorbed herself into the culture and kind of doesn't want to come back. Um, she's enjoying herself so, so much, which, which is really cool. Um, Simone and Sarah are trying to come on, so we're making small talk until they do. We're hoping they do. They're bouncing in and out, um, just to know, let you know it is a 12-hour difference. I don't know. That could be it. 
possibly um, Google doesn't work in that area. I'm not sure. Or, you know, something might be happening. Um, Simone, we did see her for a second. And we see lots of text that Sarah is here, but we haven't. Oh, here comes Simone again. So hopefully we'll get um, get them on. And in the meantime, we're talking about exchange students asking questions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> but we do have some viewers. Thank you for joining us. Um, and welcome to the uncertain world of Google Hangouts. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sketchy. It is sketchy, but it's kind of fun. That makes it kind of fun. We just hope that we can actually get to talk to Sarah and Simone. That would be really awesome. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there, can we talk with Simone via Facebook possibly? Or have you been doing that, Jasmine? Um, yeah, I've been talking through the, to them through Facebook. Um, okay. You know how? So, um, okay, wait. No, it's seven twenty-eight. Sarah said I can see you guys talking about us bouncing in and out, and Simone says I can see you guys, but there's a lag, and I can hear people speaking, but I can't understand what they're saying. So it sounds like Simone has a, a connection problem. Yeah, the problem. Um, I wonder if Simone is on. Um, it could be that she's on mobile. And mobile plus Europe maybe doesn't work so well. Although um, Kyla was on mobile, and that worked perfectly fine. Yeah. So, so we'll Sarah can hear us, I'm guessing? That's what she said. Well, she says, I can see you guys. I can see you guys talking about us. So I'm assuming that she can hear, hear, hear us as well. OK, so it sounds like Sarah is close to being with us. Simone is bouncing in and out, joined about, oh, half a dozen times. Here she comes again. <laughs> I, have, so I, have, I? I have another solution, kind of. I could, like, there we go. Um, I like to, oh, OK. Hey. Hey. Yay. OK. Hi, Simone. Uh, Hi, Simone. Oh, can she hear us? Maybe she can't yeah, hear can us. Hear can you? Oh, okay. We can hear you. Go ahead and talk. Don't be typing. <laughs> we want to hear what you have to say. Welcome. Thank you. So what's up? What's You're in Pamplona, is that correct? Yeah, I am. I'm in Pamplona. Okay. And tell us a little bit about it, and then we can ask you questions. Um, well, it's uh, it's uh, sort of a famous city in Spain. It's known for the running of the bulls, um, but it's it's not a really it's not a really big city, but it's it's really cool. It's got a lot of history, and uh, yeah, I mean, I enjoy it. It's it's good. It's good. Um, I just go to a regular Spanish high school um, with regular Spanish kids. One of my classes aren't English, they're all in Spanish, and. Um, and I live with host families. Um, I have four host families in total. And they're my host families because they also have kids that are abroad right now with Rotary Youth Exchange. So for instance, the, my current host family has a daughter in New Jersey. Um, and so I take her spot for a couple months and then I rotate. And so there's four exchange students in Pamplona. There's me, there's a girl from Michigan, a girl from Australia, and a boy from Japan. And we all rotate the host families. Um, yeah, and we all go to different schools as well. So, I mean, if you're interested in the program, you probably won't be going to the same school as any of the other exchange students because that would kind of ruin it. Wow. So, what? Uh, if I understand you correctly, you are a little bit um, funny sounded, a little bit. Um, is anybody else having trouble understanding Simone? Or is it just me? Okay, it's probably just me. Um, so you have four host families, and you rotate, mm -hmm. and you rotate schools as well. No, you stay in the same school. Ah. Yeah. So all of the host families are in the same place. Yeah, they're all in the same city. It would be really, it's really strange. It's not uh, typical for uh, for you to change cities. Neat. Are you skipping school for this? Um, no, but I do have to go in about 15 minutes. 
Okay, uh, that's fine. In Europe, in general, school starts later. Um, for instance, when school starts on Maui, which is around 7.45, uh, that's when I'm getting up here. <laughs> nice. I think a lot of our kids would love that. Yeah, and uh, it's sort of a different lifestyle, but it's something that you get accustomed to. For instance, um, for instance, in Spain, they eat lunch at 3 instead of at 12. So the school day is you go to school, you have about a 20-minute break, and then you continue your classes, and then you go home at around 2.30, and you go to eat lunch. And then dinner is around 9.30 to 11.30 p.m. on a weeknight. And then during the weekends, it can get as late as 1.30 to 2 a.m., just because that's just how they do it. So, yeah, there's certain things that have sort of changed, but, yeah. Neat. Um, I see Simone, but Simone's in Jasmine's. Oh, I see what Jasmine has done. Jasmine has put Sarah in another in another chat. Is that correct, Jasmine? Yeah. Can Can you be louder, Sarah? Hello. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the coolest thing ever. That is very very cool. Oh, we're talking to Simone. Um, we're talking, to, and she's t telling us about Spain. Since we have you, um, um, Sarah, tell us about um, Italy. It, uh, what part of it? You're in P Padua, Padua, right? Yes. So I'm in I'm in the city called Padua, and it's um, 30 minutes from Venice um, on the Adriatic, so the east coast of Italy. It's um, a pretty pretty large city. Um, we have. <clears throat> about the same population of Maui, but in a small city. And I'm um, really enjoying it. I'm, I would say I'm nearly fluent in Italian. Um, and loving it. Did you say loving it? Yes. Kyla doesn't want to come back, you know. Kyla does not want to come back. Oh. No, I don't want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Um, so I, what is what is I, school like? School oh, is so different. It's it's not. I feel like school in in, in the United States is much more of a um, social experience because you have um, extracurriculars and. Um, usually you have like a fun class, maybe art or um, uh, something creative. But in Italy, no, it's all straight, dry classes, and you never change classrooms. So you sit in the same desk all day with the same teachers that just come in the classroom, and the teachers rotate, and you're with the same students all day as well. And there's no lunch at school. You eat lunch around two when you go home. Oh, geez. And what kind of classes do you take, Sarah? We'll ask Simone that, that question, too. I go to a scientific school in Italy because when you, after middle school in Italy, you pick, as a high school student, you pick either a scientific liceo, a liceo is the high school, um, an artistic high school, a classical high school, or a, um, a linguistic high school. Huh. And so I'm scientific, so I'm taking physics, biology, chemistry, um, but at higher levels because they take, um, these people have taken physics since freshman year biology since freshman year and chemistry since freshman year. So they go very deep um, and very detailed into the studies. And then I'm taking math. Um, right now, we just finished studying a very in-depth study of hyperboles and um, uh, taking Italian literature as well as um, my English class. <laughs> wow. 
And what about you? What about you, Simone? What what kind of classes are you taking, Simone? I'm similar to Sarah. I'm on the science track. Spain is really similar to Italy in the sense that we have a science high school, and then you have language, and then you have art, and it's sort of separated. Um, but right now, I'm taking biology, physics, math, um, like social studies. I guess you would call it. Uh, philosophy, religion, and language, as well as English, um, and it's um, it's it's really different just the way they they work and they study and uh, yeah, like Sarah said, the levels are a lot more advanced when it comes to the sciences and the math um, because they've been studying it for several years longer than we have, and they also they don't separate it into individual years; they study it over the course of several years. Wow. Did we lose Sarah, Jasmine, or did I can't hear you? You mu muted yourself, I think. Yeah. <laughs> can't hear um, you, Jasmine. Yeah, I think she'll come back later because I think it's easier to just do one person on one time and then other. Person. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, no, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So, um, okay. Um, so, Simone, did you have a hard time fitting in or blending in or? Yeah. Well, I mean. You can never really blend in. Um, it's sort of it's sort of impossible just because everyone knows you as the exchange student unless you go to a really really big school and even then people just sort of know who you are and you you may have never spoken with them but they'll sort of be like you're the exchange student like you're not from here but I mean everyone's usually very welcoming um, but of course even if you study for years whatever language or whatever place you're going to whatever language they speak even if you study for years. Um, you're going to get there and you're just not going to understand. It's just inevitable unless you're fluent because they speak really quickly. They don't, I mean, they sort of, they're sort of conscious that they need to go slower, but it's sort of, it's sort of, you know, they'll say something slowly to you like, do you like Spain so far? And then they'll continue with their conversation, which will go really rapidly. And I mean, it just takes a while to adjust to how fast everyone speaks. But I mean, of course, that's how fast we speak in English. But to us, it's it's it's, it's too much. It's sort of overwhelming. Um, but everyone's always really understanding of um, the, the fact that you don't understand, and they're always really helpful. And I mean, it's good. I mean, but like Sarah said, by I mean, by the seventh month mark, you should be basically fluent in your language. Not necessarily writing, but speaking definitely. Yeah. Do you feel fluent? Sometimes I do. It depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> do they do a lot of slang there? I know, you know, some places they have um, maybe provincial ways of um, saying things that you might. That's not the standard. Is that a problem? Yeah, yeah. Um, and especially with Spanish, because it's spoken all over the world, you can sort of learn a dialect from a certain area. For instance, my Spanish teacher is Senora Sato, and she's um, she's from Peru. And in Peru, they use certain words for things. For instance, in Peru, they use computadora for computer. And here, they use um, ordenador, which is a different word entirely. And so you can show up. And it's sort of like learning British English and showing up to the US and like asking for the loo. Like, you just sort of get like looks and sort of like be laughed at a little bit. And it's just something that like it just happens. But yeah, there's definitely slang. And you sort of pick up on it after a while because there's a there's a Spanish version of like that all the kids use, so they use the word like. Uh -huh. That's very cool. Yeah, I see. So. Ja I see. Jacob is trying to come on. Jacob Alabab Moser. So hopefully he'll he'll be on. He's from Seabury, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> Not an exotic, exquisite place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then I think you met him, right, Michelle, before? Jacob? Oh yeah. Yeah. He was on. Uh -huh. He was on. So Simone, what advice do you have for people who are um, considering going to um, a different country to to study? Any advice or just do it? Like I know, it, like whatever it takes, you just sort of have to do it if you want to. If, even if you're slightly interested, you have to really invest some time into researching this experience because it's amazing. It's just so amazing, and you just sort of have to do it if you can, like. Like if it's impossible to do it, then I understand. But even if there's a slight possibility that you could do it, you have to try because it's so cool. It is so cool, 
And I mean, if you're interested in going to a specific country, like for instance, when I first applied, I applied for Argentina. And so when I didn't get Argentina, I was kind of upset because I was like, well, that's what I always wanted. That's where I always wanted to go. And so why, why am I not in Argentina right now? But you find out that you're just sort of meant to go where you're meant to go. And you always end up having a great experience in whatever country you go to, whichever country you end up in. And it's, um, it's really important to just be open when you get there, just to sort of, just to sort of, um, just to sort of integrate into the culture and everything. And that can be sort of difficult, but it's, it's, it's really, it's really, it, it's important that you try. And if I were to suggest anything, I would suggest trying to work out your class credits before you go, because. Um, I have to do some makeup work over the summer before I start school again, which will be unfortunate. But I mean, it's sort of important that you figure out if you decide to do the program. It's really important that you figure out which classes you're going to do and where you're going to get your credits from. And also, if you're deciding to do the PSAT or the SAT, where you're going to take that and everything. And those are things to keep in mind. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's from Seabury Inn that they're requiring you to take these classes before you come back. Is that how it works? Yeah. Right now what I'm doing is I'm doing physics um, in Spanish and math in Spanish. And then I'm doing um, online courses for U.S. history and U.S. literature over the summer. And so it'll be sort of combined. Um, but the grading system is also different in Spain. They do one out of ten. Um, and it's not like uh, it's not like the U.S. where I mean it's hard to get A's, but it's definitely something like achievable. Like a, you would think, like a 90 to 100 percent would be something obtainable. But um, here, um, what you would consider an A would be around an eight, an 8.5, and then a nine or a 10 is just something almost logically impossible. Um, but there's certain kids that do it, but it's it's really it's really they're they're very academically driven here, as they are in Seabury as well. But just in general, just in general, they um, they work very hard for their grades, and it's um, yeah. Well, I think you're very brave to go to do that and be in a different country and learning a different language and academically, you know, rigorous. I would yeah. like, I'd be on the next plane coming home. I'm thinking <laughs> that was <Yeah>. me. <laughs> I can't do it. I know it's like it gets a little bit frustrating sometimes, but yeah, you'll yeah. definitely have moments if you decide to do the exchange. It's you'll definitely have moments where you're just sort of there and no one understands what you're saying and and you don't and you can't express how you feel just because you don't know how to say it and you're just sort of frustrated. But it's it's a really it's a really humbling experience. It really teaches you a lot about yourself. In a way, it teaches you, I know this sounds strange, but it teaches you to learn to just be by yourself because, I don't know, I think we're sort of accustomed to just always being on our phones and always being with our friends, always chatting. But, I mean, you can't do that here necessarily because you, your friends will continue with their life wherever they are. And you sort of have to, you know, just sort of learn to be by yourself for a bit because especially when you first get to your country, you're not going to have friends right away. Um, it's sort of like something that you have to work at because they're just not as, um, they're just not as immediately super friendly here. It sort of, sort of takes time to, to integrate into a friendship group because they've all known each other for a really long time. They all have known each other since they were infants and they have these really close-knit groups so to sort of go into one is a bit difficult, but it's definitely worth it in the end because once you once you make friendships, it's amazing. And um, but yeah, sometimes it just gets really difficult. It gets really difficult, but it's it's something that really that really makes you a stronger person in the end, I would think. Yeah, it sounds like it. So those other did you say there are three others that rotate? Yeah. Or yeah. other and do you get to um, see them at all or interact with them at all? Because they're oh, rotating, yeah. so you probably don't, or you do. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, you can sort of see them on the weekends if you want to. That's allowed. Um, and I mean, they, I mean, if you do have exchange students in your city, I would suggest hanging out with them. I mean, yeah, you, it'll, it'll sort of inhibit your language learning experience a bit. But I mean, everyone does it, and in the end. Um, the program actually recommends it just because you make such you make such great friendships with the uh, other exchange students in the city, and for a while they're the only they're going to be the only people that you can actually relate to because they're going through the same experience that you are. 
So for a while, the exchange students are the only ones that really understand what's going on because your friends at home aren't going to understand and people at your school here aren't going to understand. But you have these exchange students and they're having the same experiences as you and they can give you tips like, oh, well, I found that if I do this, it gets better. And I mean, yeah, so. It sounds like they were the, they're the lifeline at the beginning, yeah? Yeah, they are. They definitely are. Yeah, that's cool. Very, very cool. Anybody have questions of Simone? Uh, Jacob just joined us. Thanks for coming, hey. Jacob. Hey, Simone. Hi. I haven't seen you in, like, months. This is so weird. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're having a lot of fun, though. I just, like, came in. Wow. Quite the experience. <laughs> cool. So do you go to school, like, the five days of the week, and then, like, weekends you kind of go out and, like, visit other places in the city? Um, yeah, I have a regular five-day week, just like um, just like at Seabury. Um, but just uh, for Sarah Armstrong, she has school on Saturdays as well, uh, much as like yeah. Oh, jeez, I would give up. Yeah, um, not all schools in Italy do that. Not all schools in Spain do that. It just, I mean, it's just sort of a luck of the draw wherever you end up. It's just sort of random. It just happens. Mm. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, normally that doesn't happen, but it happens to some people. Um, we asked um, Kyla about homework. Do you have lots of homework? Um, well, here it's really interesting. For instance, at Seabury, you would get like six hours of homework every night. You would have about like 40 math problems, maybe, and like 28 of them will be sort of okay, and then like the last 10 will be sort of difficult, right? <laughs> here they'll assign, here they'll assign um, uh, like three problems, but there'll be these huge, immense problems. Um, and uh, and so it depends just on how well you understand the topic and how how quick you are to pick up on things. So for certain people, homework can be really quick. It can be like an hour. Um, but for other people, it can take a really, really long time. And especially for me, math isn't my strongest subject. The level is harder here, and it's also in Spanish. So oh, math, has been, math has been really, really hard. Um, it's been really, really hard. And they're also, they're just at a more advanced level. For instance, um, I don't know, I was asking a student at Seabury about this, but for instance, right now, we're finishing up derivatives in Spain. And I don't know, I'm pretty sure we learned that in our senior year at Seabury. So that's just to give you a general idea. Um, or at least the track that I'm on. I would learn derivatives <laughs> in my senior year. Right, that's um, like AP calculus. Yeah, exactly. And right now, that's for the most normal, like the most basic normal level here, um, mm. we're learning it now, and we haven't even finished it yet. Yeah. So would so, you, I mean, would you say that the education is more advanced uh, where you are? I mean, harder um, at your school. In ways, yes. In ways, no. Um, for instance, the students here uh, for their language class, they don't write essays. I have never seen one essay being written. Here. Hello. This is my host sister. She's getting ready for school. Oh. Um, yeah, it's really great. Sometimes you have some host siblings, and they're really fun. They're really fun. They're good to have around. Um, but yeah, for instance, here their language is a lot different. They don't write essays. They don't read a lot of novels. They do. They study a lot more uh, like gr grammar and everything. And so they read lots of old texts, like poems, um, and they study the grammatical structure of all the uh, compositions, but there's never write a five-page essay with this thesis and uh, this conclusion and it has to have like, a specific structure. They don't, they don't write essays here. That's just not part of it. And so that's not necessarily less or more advanced, but it's definitely different. But um, in certain cases, the math and the science is more advanced. It just, just is, yeah. Wow, very, very cool. And so yeah. how much longer are you going to be there? Um, I have to go as of now, actually, because I catch the bus in about six oh, minutes. Oh, no, I mean, like, okay, oh. bye, but oh, when are you coming back to Maui is what I was asking. Oh, okay, um, I'm staying here until July because I'm staying for the running of the bulls, um, and then I head on home. So, Very yeah, I'll have, cool. yeah, I'll have roughly a month uh, summer on Maui, and then I'll start up. Awesome. Well, when yeah. you come back, we're going to have lots of, we're going to be all ears to hear what's going on. Thank you so Great. much for coming, Simone. Cool. Thank you. Bye, Simone. <laughs> you take care now. Bye, you everybody. You have to catch the bus. Are you leaving, Susan?
Yeah. Don't, don't yet. Okay. Don't have to eat your food. Okay. Thanks Bye, for coming. Guys. Good night. Good night. Um, Jasmine, is Sarah still there? No, I think she went. I think she went to school too. Uh, okay. That's okay. That we was good. That we solid hour though. For a little. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I I thought I could go back and forth. Shucks, on that. But that all turned out pretty good. So yeah. all that. Oh. Go ahead, Thomas. Um, all the students that we interviewed, they were all uh, juniors going to be seniors at Seabury. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know what's surprising is I don't think people at Seabury know that many people know that. Yeah. But isn't that the saddest thing? Yeah. yeah it really is. I unfortunate. Oh, go ahead, Jasmine. I don't think the school wants to publicize that, right? At <laughs> the same time. Uh, yeah. I don't think so either. I think it's kind of funny. They're like. They quit Seabury to go abroad. <laughs> oh, yeah, really. Oh. I guess you could, like, depend on how you word it. You're like, these three Seabury Hall students got the opportunity to go abroad because they are from Seabury Hall, or three students quit Seabury Hall to study abroad. It's like a whole perspective thing. <laughs> no, but they're coming back. This is like a, um, you know, and a lot of other people do it in different schools. I think of it as a privilege, but maybe the school... I'm thinking the school, you know, because it may not be the same kind of curriculum. It sounds like their curriculum is pretty intense, but it doesn't match, you know, the college prep kind of thing that we're thinking about. Maybe that's why they're hesitant. Uh, it's just like, I don't know, I feel like super intimidated because like if we're not at the, like, wait, are they going to public schools, all of them? I don't I know. So. Oh, they're all private? Well, I, I think know. the public. When I was talking to Sarah before. Okay. Well, because I was, like, really sad because, like, if their public is, like, above some of the standards of, like, Seabury, which is, like, one of the best schools on the island, so, like, if you compared, like, their public to, like, one of our public schools. <laughs> well, you know, um, the, uni yeah. the United States, not just Seabury, the United States is, doesn't have the best education in the world. Yeah, uh, I don't uh, yeah. Europe does. So it's not like a Seabury thing, it's a U.S. kind it's, of thing. It's probably yeah. the educational system, at least what yeah. I inferred. It's, it's something like similar to the fact that it's like they have high schools tailored to the students' uh, curiosity, to the students' like drive. So mm -hmm. unlike here, where high schools, oh, it's in the U.S. generally, high schools teach all, everything. Hi, oh, here's Roberta and uh, Mr. Hodera and Mrs. Hodera. Hi there, well, welcome. Hey. You're at the end. We're having, a, we're having a discussion about. Oh, somebody's. Yeah. You had background going on. Um, we're having a discussion about the educational system, U.S. versus Europe. What do you think? High school is tailored to the students. We're getting feedback from you. Drive. Oh. So, unlike here, where high school is. Oh, it's in the U.S. Do you have uh, two windows open, Roberta? I'm gonna mute my there. Sorry, that's okay. Can you hear us now? Or... Okay, so you're completely quiet. Okay. Oh, somebody's yeah. Background going. You must have. You must have. <laughs> you must have a uh, couple windows open. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you, Mrs. Odera. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, it's the, the <laughs> weird <Sorry>. mic thing. <laughs> yeah, there's a weird mic thing going. Hold on. Uh, oh, Jacob muted. God, oh, yeah. Dear. Jacob, how dare Wait, you? That? Do you? That's pretty cool. Expression <laughs> of power. Okay, go ahead, Thomas. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll come on. Go ahead, Thomas. Oh, on my previous point? Okay, so. I, I, I like your point. Go ahead. I, I was just saying, like, uh, Europe tailors high schools to specific drives, whereas the U.S. doesn't. So the U.S. standard has to teach all the subjects, where the whereas the European standard is. Oh, yeah, it's a... <laughs> the European standard is only teaching a few, or the ones that are more specifically tailored to the students' interests. Well, that was interesting because um, who was it? Sarah. Somebody said that they had mainly lecture, though. That didn't sound like it was tailored to their. Kyla said that. She said it was mostly lecture, but I really like what Thomas said, and I think that um, 
Who, what, who is it? Sarah said it. In Italy, yeah. She's from Italy, right? Sarah, she said that there's four different high schools, scientific, artistic, classical, or linguistic. I thought that yeah. was really interesting to yeah. have that those differences. But then I had heard, too, before that um, isn't it also in Europe that some kids go a more um, academic route and some a more... Um, you know, hands-on training school. Yeah, vocational. Mm -hmm. I was curious to know, though, if there, um, if technology is integrated in any way, either in the delivery of the instruction or in how they are doing the work and turning it in. None of them mentioned that, did they? Yeah. No, we could have asked that question. Um, maybe we'll we'll ask them um, individually and then get. Maybe I'll do a blog post on it just to see. Uh, that would be a, would, that would have been a great question to ask them. I know uh, Kyla said that um, everything's the same when she was talking about cell phones. It seemed kind of up to date. So I know it seemed the Czech Republic seemed pretty up to date, but I don't know about um, Spain and Italy as far as technology. I think it's really cool that they take like physics, biology, and chemistry like each year of their high school. I think it's a pretty common thing, like almost like because we're talking to all three of them, they all of their high schools do that. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I thought was uh, actually it might just be the the vocabulary there, but I didn't hear it. My school is tailored on humanities, so I was wondering if they have a high school for mm -hmm. humanities, or if that's supposed to be like a classical high school or something. I don't know, but. Yeah. We have to do some research on it to see. Maybe we can have a follow-up um, hangout or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I have yeah. to actually head out. I have a lot of studying yeah. to do. We're headed to <laughs> the top of the hour, so um, it was pretty fantastic. We got everybody on. Kyla mm -hmm. came in at the beginning. That was awesome. And we finally got, um, on the recap, um, it's going to be recorded so we can watch it, but that was very cool how Jasmine got Sarah on using a Facebook chat. Now that's pretty inventive. So that's really cool. Anybody want to do any parting thoughts on it? I'm going to... Anybody want to say anything special before we... We're, what I'm going to do is turn it off, but you can stay on if you like. I don't have anything no? great to say. <laughs> Nothing great to say. Okay. Thank you all for coming. And um, great, great um, show. More, um, just as good, maybe more than we expected. And definitely food for thought. So thanks for um, tuning in.